Hi there. Another different subject to add to the list. For many, many years I've always been interested in scientific instruments of various types. Most of our programs on antiques, they normally show uninteresting things like pieces of porcelain, things like that which leave me ex cold. But show me a nice barometer, a nice microscope, a nice galvanometer, something like that, then yes, I'm very interested. Anyhow, I'd, years ago, there was a program called the Antiques Roadshow. And one of the objects they brought in was a barometer. Now normally, they wouldn't even feature because they're considered to be too common. In fact, you can pick barometers up, the normal models, at our local boot sales for a fiver, ten pounds, some, something like that. But, this gentleman brought in one of these. I had never seen one before, so obviously I was quite interested. What we have is a barometer which works on the principle of a curved tube. I don't know if I can show it, but in there, that brass is a brass tube that's actually curved. Without writing diagrams down, which I'm not going to do. Suffice to say that I can show you closely. There's, there's the tube, you can see the tube there. Now, with pressure gauges which work in the opposite way you apply water pressure or steam pressure to them and if you can imagine a curved tube in the shape of a circle as the pressure increases it tends to want to straighten the tube and this straightening effect is linked to various cogs and eventually it comes out on a pointer which indicates the other pressure and pretty well all pressure gauges use this principle it is the Borden principle named after Mr. Mr. Borden well this idea in reverse was applied to a barometer the tube is a vacuum or as next as near as possible to a vacuum. The shape is as as it is normally, but if the pressure changes outside, which it, these rely on, it tends to want to move the tube either in or out. And if we look very carefully, we can see the arrangement of cogs the bottom of that is through a, an adjustment of levers. Beautifully made. Um, this then goes up onto a, a set of cogs which act on the centre spindle. I'll try and get it in. There we are. Acts on the centre spindle. To change the pointer. Now this type of barometer came out similar time times to what I would call the normal type of barometer or aneroid barometer. They're, they're both aneroid barometers, it means aneroid means without water or liquid. But the normal ones you see were invented by Vidi. Mr. Viddy, and um, they were the ones you invariably see. These type of quite rare, and I was very lucky to obtain this. It hasn't been restored or anything, it's just been left as it is. It's called a metallic barometer. If we look at it careful, give you some ideas. Gold medals at exhibitions, and you can see the name E. Borden. and Richards, Borden and Richards. 
Richard was also a well-known barometer maker in France. So it's E. Borden and Richard's patent, Paris. I have got a barograph made by Richards as well. I, there's so many thing, things I want to put on and, and show show you because you know I built this collection up over many many years and it's nice to be able to share some of the perhaps more unusual things it's got on there. It looks like uni. Yeah, Universal Exhibition Council Medal, London, 1851. As you see, it's got the normal things on the barometer. Stormy rain, change, fair, stormy, which is traditional. The case is black ebonised wood. It's showing its age, but that is all part of the in, uh, of the interest. And generally, when the barometer rises, that is when the weather tends to get better. But as I say, they have to be taken with a pinch of salt. This one's in inches. And that is inches of mercury, because the original barometer was invented by Mr. Torricelli, who was a student of Galileo. And it all came about when Galileo was asked to install a pump in the grounds of some Duke, Duke of Tuscany, I think, was the gentleman. And the pump wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. And it was his student who found out that the reason it didn't lift the water was because you could only lift water up to a height of about 14 feet in one go. You had to use what was called a lift pump in two stages. And that was due to the air pressure. And through this, by a demonstration using mercury, which is 13 or 14 times heavier than water, a tube was inverted and a vacuum was formed at the end of the tube which is called a Torricellian vacuum and the t it would rise to about 30 inches depending on the air pressure. Another gentleman of the day, Otto von Urich of the Hemisphere fame, put one on the side of his house but that was a water one so it can be done. But anyhow, I am wafting off into other things which I shouldn't be doing. That is the barometer. That is how it works. And any questions, please ask. I think I've included everything. Yeah, I hope I have. Anyhow, thanks for putting up with my ramblings. Um, and any questions, please ask. Please subscribe and thank you again.